Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. In today's video, we will be reviewing the story told by the new to sets coming in season 11. This season's to sets are miles better than the last season's, telling a much more interesting story with a much more likable main character. If you haven't gotten the chance to listen to the cassettes, I will have a link below to the complete audio, and I would advise giving it at least one listen through. If you don't want them to be spoiled for you though, and you're okay with just not listening to them, I would advise clicking off now and coming back when you you know, okay with being spoiled, because this video will contain spoilers for those cassettes. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this video. <laughs> Starting off with the first set, we have Departure. In this set, we are introduced to our new protagonist, a young 16-year-old Norwegian girl named Freya. Freya has just finished a fight with the previous owner of the tape recorder, which we know to be Adam, the protagonist of last season's cassettes. The fight between these two was a seemingly close one, as he was able to stab her five times and break her jaw by throwing her on the ground, while she was able to get the jump on him and stab him before ultimately winning the fight. After I hit him with a big ass stone to his face. When her victory, she stole the tape recorder which had fallen out of Adam's backpack, which she states she did it as a payback for him hurting her. So, pretty fair. The story continues in the next cassette called Convalescence. Freya has now bandaged up their wounds from their fight, however her broken jaw has made it very hard for her to speak, but Despite this broken jaw, she doesn't view it as the largest issue at hand, instead being more upset over the loss of her distro lighter, which was her source of fire, as well as the troll she had named Loki. Following this momentary sadness over the realization of what she had lost, she turns to a new form of entertainment in the form of last season's cassettes, having acquired these tapes when she stole the tape recorder. She listened to Adam's tale and gave some commentary on her own thoughts about it. I listened to some of the cassettes. If that guy, his name was Adam, didn't beat me like a dog, I wouldn't have thought that he would be such a dick. <laughs> okay, it's clear that he's trying to sound like the toughest dude that ever lived, but there's this cassette in which he sings to some girl called Helga. It's so lame. She concludes the cassette with details as to where she is staying as of the recording of the cassette, seeing as she had to leave her original shelter after Adam tried to loot it. This new shelter is an RV, which she states is great for hiding, but not for living, as it's not comfortable, but easy to defend and watch over. She regrets not killing Adam, as if she did, she would have been able to continue living where she was, in a relative comfort. The tale continues in a third cassette called Heritage. This cassette opens up with Freya stating that she has developed a fever, before making a slight joke about the state of her face. And it still looks like half is in plum, but it, that means it's tasty, right? <laughs> Ouch. Okay, laughing still hurts. She moves on from her current state of affairs to talk about the only book she has, a book about Vikings. She starts off by saying she isn't a great reader, however this book makes sense to her, and that she really likes it, wishing that the Vikings were still around. She talks about some of the cool technologies of the Vikings, which she states she doesn't know how to really make, which reminds her of an old quote from her mother, There is no bad weather, only bad clothing. Freya then finishes by stating that the best idea the Vikings had were the ice skates, which she personally has now made for herself to help her move faster on the ice. She finishes the cassettes by commenting on how many rights the ancient Vikings granted women, which she compares to the comparably less rights of women before concluding with the statement, I think the post-apocalypse is more liberating. I can do anything. The next cassette, Tranquility, is recorded a few days later, where she recants the tales of what was happening on that day. She was scouting the region out when she had found a perfect hiding spot, a cave hidden in the rocks. This hiding spot would have been perfect for her if not for the fact that someone had already been there before, as the floor was covered with trash, leaves, and items, and in the corner lay the dead body of the previous occupant. In the eyes of Freya, the woman seemed to be at peace, passing away for some unknown reason that she just couldn't figure out. Freya states that perhaps she just gave up. In the end, Freya decides to leave the cave and the cassette ends. The next cassette is a bit further into the future, and it is called Conspiracy. Following a fishing trip, Freya decided to take a nap in a hay bale, which, upon awakening, she overhears the conversation between two members of ARC. These two members talked about their organization and their goal the organization has to restore society, but they also mentioned that these two members of ARC also belong to the organization Wrath, which they stated was led by scientists. 
The groups talked about airdrops and Ada before switching to the discussion about a mysterious Church of Sutra. The Church of Sutra being a location on Felcanton and a group of people who apparently wish to return to the old way of life. Freya, who is in love with the concept of Vikings, loves the concept of this faction, and believing that they may be at Felcanton, decides to head off in that general direction to try and find them. The story continues in Tape 6 Perseverance, as Freya finally arrives in Felcanton. Felcanton is characterized by her as a bustling region with more people comparable to a city center. She remarks that she was scared and that she had to sneak around and sweat several people's throats while making her way around. She then considers the ethicality of her murders, at first justifying that it is the Viking way before coming to the realization that it is most likely wasn't. She finds solstice in the ideals of the Viking sense of brotherhood, desiring to be part of a greater group like they were. She concludes the text by saying that stealth may be unmanly. However, it's a good thing she's a woman. Following this is Tape 7, Humanity. Freya finally arrives in the Falcanton Church, which she describes as being clean and orderly. Here she meets the preacher, who relaxes her instincts to hide, letting her be comfortable enough to talk to him. This mysterious preacher explains himself as being a worshipper of the god of the sun, and she begins to inquire as to what the location of the Church of Sutra is. He reveals that many people have come to ask him where this church is, and that he doesn't fully know where it is, but he does know that it weighs to the south. He hands her a coin that he got from a museum, and tells her that it may help her on her travels. This character is very mysterious, however Freya leaves him with a new goal in mind, and heads south to try and find this mysterious church. She never figures out his name, stating that she guesses that names don't really matter in this world anymore. Her journey south is picked up in Tape 8, Hunger, where she remarks about the pain of her journey, her hunger and desire to return to the safety of her original shelter, and how much she misses it. She remarks that the region she has entered has been picked Queen of Loot, and that the Viking's book, to which she turned to guidance so often, offers no solutions, nothing but a recipe whose ingredients she couldn't hope to achieve. She finishes the cassettes off with a sarcastic comment. By the way, if anyone is listening to this while I fucking die of starvation, don't it lose. They taste like shit. Her journey south continues in Tape 9, Solitude, where she remarks she hasn't seen any people in quite some time. She no longer has any problems getting food or shelter, but the isolation of her journey is starting to get to her. She spends her time listening to Adam's cassettes and that she's been listening to his voice for so long that she's starting to view him as her friend. This isolation is suffocating her to the point where she picks up telephones in a desperate bid to be reminded of what the company of another person would be like. Instead, she is alone, stated by herself to only be accompanied by the dead and the voices of the man who broke her jaw. She states that the dead look so peaceful, and that though she will miss the living, she can't help but envy those who have found peace in death. She mulls over her isolation and futility of continuing life, seeing that she sees faces in everything, and that perhaps the cycle of life really isn't worth it. Her journey concludes in Tape 10 Alliance, where she finally reaches her destination. After searching hard for any signs of humanity, she finally found a village, and people patrolling the mountains. She decides that she will attempt to approach them peacefully, with her hands raised up to show that she is no threat, that she will show them her coin and really hopes that she will be accepted among them. She concludes this cassette and the final cassette of this season with a series of optimism as to her hopes that she will be accepted within this group. I really hope I found my new home. I don't want to be on my own anymore. I wish me luck. Well... Since I'm just talking to myself, I wish me luck. I really do. I hope they won't kill me on sight. I'm going in. Bye.